Hello, welcome to this video. I'm Reza Rat from Radicat. In this video, I'm going to show you a glossary of Microsoft Fabric uh, terms and very brief description of what they are. Um, you can also get the full uh, glossary down in the description below. So let's jump into it. Okay, so let's start this glossary um, by some of the terms. Uh, I always thought it is good to have something like that because we have a lot of terminologies that are similar in the world of uh, Microsoft Fabric. So let's talk about it. And these are not in any particular order. We'll talk about each of them uh, individually and I try my best to keep this list up to date. Uh, okay, Fabric, what is Microsoft Fabric? Microsoft Fabric is a cloud-based software as a service, fully end-to-end -end analytics solution, uh, in hosted in Microsoft Azure, uh, which uses different workloads to perform different tasks in analytics space, such as data science, data engineering, data warehousing, business intelligence. Uh, Lakehouse is uh, one of the objects in Microsoft Fabric. This is a type of database that does not only store uh, data as a table, but it also stores it as a file. So it, you have a place that you have files and um, database tables beside each other. Lakehouse comes with a SQL Analytics endpoint for uh, connecting to the SQL back end of it. And it also comes with a default Power BI semantic model and you can create more semantics models on top of it. For each of these topics I'm talking about, there is a link uh, for more description in the blog that is in the description. Uh, warehouse. Warehouse is kind of similar to Lakehouse in terms of like the database structure, but it with one big difference. Warehouse doesn't support storing uh, files. It only supports structured data, which is tables. Uh, warehouse also have one other difference with the Lakehouse, and that is the SQL endpoint or the SQL functionality working with Warehouse is read and write, whereas the Lakehouse it is read only. Uh, data Mart is uh, a database structure based on Azure SQL database backend. It is a still preview at the moment with Power BI. It is a um, type of database that you get when you have Power BI premium capacity or P PPU um, or one of the fabric capacities. This gives you the ability to have the database layer in the middle of a data flow and a semantic uh, data set. SQL Analytics Endpoint is the SQL connection that we would have to the database structure we are connecting to, which can be Lakehouse, Warehouse, or a Data Mart. This SQL Analytics Endpoint uh, would give us ability to connect to these database objects from something like a SQL Server Management Studio, Visual Studio, or any database management tools or database uh, development tools, we can use that to connect to this uh, object behind the scene using that SQL analytics endpoint. Semantic model or Power BI semantic model is a Power BI data set, which is a place that we have the data um, depending on the type of connection. Sometimes we have the data, sometimes we just have the structure of the data and uh, the tables, the relationship of between the tables, the um, DAX calculation that we might have as a calculated table, calculated column or, um, or even measure. Uh, and then this semantic model is hosted in Azure Analysis Services or in Power BI service basically, or in Fabric service, and it can be connected uh, using XMLI endpoint, using other third-party tools. Uh, one lake is the storage layer of Microsoft Fabric. This is where all the data is stored. One lake is not the actual storage. One lake is lo logical storage layer on top of um, on top of Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which is the actual storage layer. One Lake uh, gives us a much smoother ability to work with all the objects that we have in our Microsoft Fabric tenant uh, seamlessly. So um, you have your, your lake house, you can connect to it using your lake house explorer or using the uh, one lake explorer in Windows. Uh, it makes it much simpler to, to use across the whole fabric environment. One place to have all of your data and you can easily access it through the one lake explorer for Windows. 
data lake is not a term, is, is not a technology. It is a term. It is a term that uh, is a place that supports storing data in any form, structured format, unstructured format. Data lake is a concept that has been used uh, by many vendors, Microsoft, Google, Amazon. They all use this concept, but they came with their own technologies to, uh, to support data lake. Uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 or ADLS Gen 2 is Microsoft uh, Data Lake, basically. This is hosted inside Azure uh, and it is a place that we can store any types of data, file format, any, anything can be stored in that. ADLS Gen 2 is actually the base layer used in one lake to, uh, to store the data. Azure, Azure is the cloud compute engine, cloud storage engine for Microsoft, uh, which is um, supporting software as a service technology, such as Power BI and Fabric, as well as infrastructure as a service, such as a virtual machine. SQL is a um, language that we can connect to a database engine using that. This can be a query language or it can be um, a script that would update some of the data or even update some of the metadata and change some of the metadata. SQL is a standard language. It's not specifically for Microsoft Fabric. Other vendors are also using it. In Fabric, SQL can be used when we connect to a warehouse, lake house, a data mart, SQL analytics endpoint, or uh, you can also use it in notebook um, using a specific version of it called the Spark SQL, which is, um, which is limited with some of the functionalities, but it works based on the Spark engine behind the scene. KQL or Custo Query Language is a query language that can be similar to SQL in some ways. You can kind of understand what it does. It works only on real-time database systems such as KQL database. KQL database is a real-time um, streaming database provider, which means that the real-time events records that comes would be stored as records in a table in a KQL database. Uh, event house is a container for multiple KQL database. When you have multiple KQL database, you can group them together as a event house. Event stream is a hub that gets data from multiple sources and um, those sources can be Azure IoT hub, event hub, uh, Kafka, or any of, any of the sources that provides um, real-time streaming data and then pass it to a destination such as KQL database, which is part of Event House or a Lake House. Uh, and it can also perform some kind of transformation throughout that, pre that process, like filtering the data, filtering the columns, grouping the data, things like that. Data flow is the um, data transformation engine in cloud in Microsoft Fabric based on Power Query behind the scene. Uh, it supports a lot of data transformation. One of the benefits of data flow is the powerful graphical interface that it has called uh, Power Query Editor. Uh, this is a place that you do a lot of data transformation without really needing to go and write the code for it. It supports uh, a lot of data connectors. More than 200 data sources are possible to get data from. Uh, in data flow in Microsoft Fabric, you can then store the data as a result in a KQL database, in a warehouse, in a lake house, or in an Azure SQL database. Data Factory is the data integration engine in Microsoft Fabric. Fabric Data Factory basically is a combination of a data pipeline, which does the orchestration uh, coming from Azure Data Factory behind the scene, plus the data flow, which is coming from Power Query behind the scene, which does the data transformation. So you have the orchestration and data transformation, you'll have a full ETL system available in Fabric Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is a older version of Fabric Data Factory. Uh, it is also, also called as ADF. This is, um, this is a place that we can have pipeline, Azure Data Factory pipeline for orchestration. It also supports data flows, but the data flows in Azure Data Factory is not as strong as data flows that we have in Microsoft Fabric. They are much more limited. At the moment, there is no way to migrate your ADF objects to, um, to Data Factory, but there are workarounds, depending on what uh, type of objects you have used, there are workarounds, and hopefully there will be a tool at some point that supports that. Data Pipeline. Data Pipeline is a data orchestration tool in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, it's a place that you can design the execution, the control flow of the execution 
of your items. Uh, this is a place that uh, you can say, for example, this activity runs after that, based on the output state of that activity, I want to run this, that, or, or something else. And activities can be things such as running a notebook, um, running a data flow, running a, uh, refreshing a semantic model. There are many activities uh, that support many different actions. Notebook is a code first experience. It is, uh, it is a place that data engineers, data scientists, they will go and write their code in four different languages are supported, Spark R, Spark, R, PySpark, Scala, and Spark SQL. Uh, using these languages, you can write um, your code and then you can execute it. Behind the scene, Notebook uh, interacts with the Spark engine uh, and it gives you ability to work with the lake house and any other objects within the fabric environment. The Spark is a uh, multi-parallel processing engine uh, for big data uh, behind the scene of Microsoft Fabric. Spark is not necessarily for Microsoft. Spark is an open source platform. It is used in uh, some other vendors that, uh, that do data analytics, data engineering type of work. In Microsoft Fabric, this is the engine behind the scene for data engineering, for data science tasks, especially when you do something in notebook or a Spark job definition behind the scene, you are working with that Spark. Spark configuration can be done at the workspace level in Microsoft Fabric, or it can be done individually throughout your notebook uh, code as well. Delta Lake or Delta Lake table is the structure in which the tables are stored in Microsoft uh, Fabric Warehouse or Lakehouse. But Delta Lake is not, again, a Microsoft only thing. Delta Lake is a open standard, path, uh, open standard format. Uh, it is used for Spark mainly. Uh, it is using um, that format to store the uh, data of the tables and it provides ability to do interesting things such as like normal database transactions as well as time travel for your database tables, uh, which can be quite helpful. Behind the scene, it uses Parquet file and JSON file, combination of these two to keep track of the changes and also store the data. Parquet file is a structure of storing data in a file. Unlike CSV, CSV is like storing data in a row format. Unlike that, Parquet stores that in a column store format, which is much more efficient in terms of writing. The size of the files usually of Parquet files are smaller than CSV files. It is also much more efficient in reading it, uh, which can be really helpful for uh, getting data from it, using it in analytics systems. Parquet file is not a Microsoft specific format, but Microsoft um, uses that in the Delta Lake structure in the Spark engine behind the scenes. All the data is stored as Parquet file behind the scene. A Spark job definition is a way that we can run a piece of executable code. This can be run, this can be written in any of the languages that is supported for the Spark behind the scene because the Spark is running this. Uh, this Spark job definition uh, can be a program that you have written. You pass parameters to it or you get uh, output parameters and then you execute it just by itself, schedule it, or you can put it as part of a pipeline and execute that whole thing uh, together. The difference between a Spark job definition and a notebook is that notebook gives you that editor experience. A Spark job definition is only for executing. M is the language for Power Query. It's a functional language. It's a language that used uh, in Power Query wherever it is used, in Power BI Desktop, in Excel, in data flows. It is a language full of functions. Different functions perform different activities. It's a case sensitive language. Uh, most of the time you don't have to write this script, whatever you do in the Power Query graphical interface, uh, in the Power Query editor, it would be translated to M script. But if you want to change it, there is a way to go and write your own M script or even modify the M scripts created by the Power Query editor. DAX is the data analytics language, data analytics expression language. It is used only in Power BI, SQL Server Analysis Services Tabular, or Excel Power Pivot. It's a language that uses functions, but it also uses a specific concepts such as filter context uh, or row context, or what we call basically as evaluation context. Usually there is a bit of learning curve for DAX when you are learning Power BI. And that is the that is the part that most of the time you would spend when you are writing calculations. 
Direct query is a mode of connection in Power BI. Using this type of connection, when you connect to a data source, you wouldn't copy the data from that source into Power BI. Data remains in wherever it is. Direct query will just bring the metadata of those tables. And then whenever you look at a visualization or a report, this would be sending queries to the data source. The result comes back, which makes direct query slow in performance. Import data is another type of connection. This is the most um, common used type of connection, which is default for most of the data sources. Uh, this is when Power BI copies the data from the source into Power BI in its own storage format, proprietary vertipack storage format, which is column stored, uh, and it is much more efficient in terms of querying the data. Import data is the best mode of connection working with Power BI because it is super fast, and all the functionalities that we have in Power BI in terms of Power Query, DAX, they all work. The only thing about import data is that the size of the model might be limited depending on the license you use for Power BI, uh, and a refresh is needed to get your data up to date. Composite model combines the features of direct query and import. So it gives you the ability to have big tables in a direct query mode, a smaller table in import. It comes up with a new storage mode for the tables called dual. Uh, it can be enhancing the performance using aggregations. Uh, and um, altogether, this is something that can be used as a good replacement of a direct query. Live connection is when you connect from Power BI to, uh, from a report to an existing Power BI semantic model or a SQL Server analysis services, uh, where you have the model already building those using the live connection. Your report will have, right, will have the live connection to that. So the report would be, the Power BI usage would be only um, visualization mode. Um, and it is a mode that we use a lot in a multi-layered architecture of using Power BI, and when you have teams, uh, a team of people working in a Power BI analytics solutions. Direct leg is a new type of connection supported uh, within Power BI for, uh, for Delta Lake tables that stored in Microsoft Fabric, which basically means lake house, warehouse. Uh, this type of connection basically reads the data directly from the Parquet file instead of importing it. Uh, so there is no need to refresh the data. Uh, on the other hand side, because it reads it from Parquet file itself, there is um, uh, the, the, the data is always live with the performance of similar to import. It's not exactly like import data performance, but it is very similar to that without needing to refresh your data. Direct link comes with some limitations such as creating calculated tables or and not being able to use SQL views. SimPy is a library in Python. The term comes from semantic model plus Python. Uh, it's a library that works uh, directly with the semantic model. As a data scientist or a data engineer, sometimes it is better for you to get data or, or connect directly to the semantic model because that is where you have all the real logic um, implemented using calculations. So SimPy gives you that ability. You can use it in notebook code. ML Spark is uh, a library in Microsoft um, um, basically to support machine learning on the Spark engine behind the scene. This is a library you can use in Notebook um, or in a Spark job definition in your code uh, to do any mach machine learning processes. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, there are still a lot of terms that I haven't mentioned in this. Um, and, uh, and that doesn't mean that we wouldn't have that. I would suggest you to put any of the terms that you are not sure about it in the comments. I will address that in another video later, and we would have extensions to this glossary. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.